when it comes to dating, um, I personally tend to stay away from Korean men. Welcome to the Melanated Files. In this series, we highlight and share the stories of black people from across the globe. Remember to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and also follow us on social media for regular updates. Let's get into the interview. My name is Felicia and I'm from Toronto, Canada. Well, I chose Korea for a few reasons, um, but I think my main reason was probably because of the pay. Um, I had student loans to pay off and so um, Korea offered a pretty good salary and housing is also included for most teachers here. So um, it was just the best thing for me in order to get rid of my, my loans and I, and I have, so. <laughs> so the thing that I like about Korea the most is definitely the food. Korean food is so good. I don't think I've tried anything that I didn't really like. There's been a couple things, but very few. They just have different like soup dishes and rice dishes and any kind of meat. So I love it. I think my favorite food, ooh, that's hard. I think my favorite is probably Haejeonggook. So it's like a pork bone soup and its nickname is the hangover soup. Um, people typically drink it after a night of drinking or eat it after a night of drinking, but I like to enjoy it anytime. It's just really good, especially during the winter. I like it. I've been here for three years. Well, my, my biggest ambition since being here was to um, be debt free. And that has been something that I've been able to achieve since being here, um, <laughs> which I'm definitely proud of. But now, I mean, along, along with, when I first came here, my, um, I really wanted to just work on myself and just grow as a person and you know being away from family and friends and, and all that and coming to a, a brand new country where you don't know anyone it really allows you some time to kind of hone in on yourself and focus on um, like myself as a person and so that's been something that I've been working on too and um, yeah being here has definitely given me that opportunity so the thing that I like the least it's kind of weird to say it's because it's also something that I like the most, um, but it's the people. So let me start off by saying like, I love Korean people. They're really sweet. They love to, you know, show you their culture and they're very um, inviting and warm in that way. But <laughs> um, I think my biggest issue with Korean people as well has just been their lack of, what should I say? Like, they just don't know what to do once they come across someone that doesn't look like them um, because Korea is a very homogenous society. As soon as they see something different, uh, they're interested by it, which is nice. Um, but I just haven't appreciated how they've gone about expressing that interest. And so, you know, they'll come and like want to touch my skin. And uh, if I have braids in, they'll want to play, play with my hair and so that's just made me feel a little uncomfortable um, and so I try to I hope those moments don't happen often when I go out but unfortunately they do pretty pretty frequently over the last three years they, they happen quite often but I mean yeah that would be it you know what it hasn't been too bad uh, I know a lot of for me personally it hasn't been bad I've heard a lot of horror stories but I can't say I share them all I mean I mentioned already having people koreans come and playing with my hair that has been a little uncomfortable for me but i i have to say that's pretty much like been the worst of it oh one thing that is difficult though as as a black woman is dealing with my hair <laughs> i mean since i've gotten here i feel like korea has gotten a lot better with opening up salons and stores that cater to black women but it is still a little difficult uh, to get things that are suitable for me for my hair Another thing is with my uh, with my students because for them, um, like I'm the first black person a lot of them have ever seen, and so I feel like I have to do a lot of um, like I just gotta, I have to teach them a lot about about me and my culture, and so that's just been it's been interesting. I've never had to explain why my skin is black ever before, um, or why you know my palms aren't why my palms are white and why my you know my hand is not so um, that's been interesting and when I first got here I think I took a very I was a little negative about it and like I would almost get mad at my kids for for asking those questions but I mean when I realized that first of all they're kids and second of all like I said I'm probably the first black person they've ever had an interaction with I realized 
I can't get mad over their ignorance, right? They're, they're really just, they're kids. And so now, like, I get excited when I get that question and I just take that opportunity to, to teach them a little something about, about who I am, where I come from. It's, it's a mix because there's, they have like the older generation and the young generation. So I think, generally speaking, the older generation doesn't have the greatest perception of black people. And so you'll see it in, you know, the way they may look at you. Um, but again, that's a generalization. I've also had the complete reverse where I've had a lot of older people who've come up to me and, you know, giving me a hug or, you know, giving me their seat on, on a train or um, called, called me beautiful. And so um, there's that. But I feel like the, the younger generation is definitely more accepting of black people and more aware of, um, of black culture. And so um, they have like a more positive outlook, which is nice. So, yeah. I don't know. I always get a kick out of the, uh, the double takes that I get sometimes. You know, I'm walking down the street and someone will, will look up and see me and <laughs> have to like do a double take because they just don't, they weren't expecting to see someone with my uh, skin color walking past them. So that's always fun. In a lot of ways, uh, Korea is pretty efficient. I like the transportation system, for one. Um, I think what they're doing with transportation is, is, is good. Like, you'll never get a train late or, or, or very rarely anyways. If it does happen, it's usually due to things that they can't really control, but it's very rare. Trains are on time, buses are on time. They run frequently. My only qualm with the transportation system is that it doesn't run very late, so it stops running about midnight for the most part. And so by midnight, it's difficult to get anywhere. Um, but other than that, I think that's pretty good. That's easy, be kind to one another. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I feel like if we lived that way, uh, there's so much that would not happen. Cause I mean, if you're doing something that, if you're doing everything that you would want somebody to do to, to you, then I just feel like the world would be a better place. <laughs> I guess for one, uh, the homogenous society, just the fact that I think the percentage is like 90% of, of people in Korea are Koreans and so it was weird just being the only foreigner for you know especially when I first moved here I was living in a smaller um, city and so um, I almost get excited every time I'd see a foreigner we had like the foreigner nod it was pretty cool um, so I think that was like the first notable difference for me another one would be so oh, the air quality. Yeah, when I first got here, I got really sick because um, the quality of the, of the air is so poor in comparison to Canada. And uh, my body just started doing strange things. I mean, it was sick. I had flu and cold and um, my face started breaking out and it was horrible. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think, I think those are the two big ones for me when I first got here. So for, for hair products, Luckily, like I was informed before I got here that I was going to have a hard time finding that kind of stuff here. And so I literally bought a suitcase full of just hair products. And I'm happy I did that because it, it did last me for maybe my first two years, if that. And so after that, I was ordering products online or going to, they have a store in um, Piontek, um, close to a military base. Um, called Honey Hair, and that uh, that saved me as well. She also has an online store, so that has helped. As far as like makeup and stuff like that, I also brought a lot from home. But luckily, I had like friends coming and going to um, to Canada, and so I was able to get some with um, get them to bring some back with them because otherwise, I would not find my uh, foundation and my complexion here. I've never seen anything remotely close. But yeah, I mean, other than that, it, it hasn't been too bad. Bring your suitcase full of hair products. <laughs> you will need it. And if you have like um, foundation or anything like that that you wear, definitely carry that as well. Um, but other than, than that, um, just come with an open mind and, uh, and stay positive and I think with that, uh, you'll have a, good, a great experience here. One of my favorite places to go to in Korea is uh, down south. Uh, it's an island called Goja Island. So it's actually just connected to Busan, which is the most southern city in Korea. Um, it's connected by a bridge, so it's pretty accessible. You can take a bus from almost anywhere, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, there's a lot of trees and nature. They have 
most the most beautiful beaches I've seen in Korea. And so I definitely recommend uh, to go there. <laughs> Smiling, laughing, and making other people laugh and smile too. Okay, so I think my superpower would be um, just smiling and being positive and um, projecting my energy on, on other people. My earliest memory was probably, oh, I had a really bad, oh, it's not good. <laughs> I think it was when um, I got stuck in mud. So I was playing with my sister and uh, a friend in our neighborhood and um, we decided to go out a little farther than we were supposed to at the playground and um, we ended up in this field of mud and it was like quicksand. I was probably only four at the time and following my older sister um, but I just remember sinking in this mud and being so afraid um, but luckily like somebody heard us screaming nearby and I remember him like coming out to rescue us so it's a bit tragic but uh, it was good, it ended well. <laughs> if I can change one thing in the world, it would be um, people's outlook on life. I feel like as a society that we're just too negative um, and that we really need to spread more positivity amongst each other and that if we did that, I think, uh, I think so many things would, wouldn't happen in our world. So my proudest accomplishment is uh, being the first person to graduate from university in my family. I mean, this is a very common one, but I think it's so important to live each day um, like it's your last because tomorrow isn't promised. And I feel like I'm reminded by that every day just with seeing, you know, things that are going on in the world or, you know, losing, losing friends. You never know what, what tomorrow is going to bring. And so um, one thing that mostly this year that I've been really trying to do is to, you know, if I have something that I need to say, I'm gonna say it, you know, if it's to a friend or to a family member, if it's, you know, telling someone that I love them, um, because you don't know that, it, that you'll have the next day to do that, or if there's something that I want to do. I mean, to be quite frank, YOLO has been my, uh, my, mo <laughs> my motto because, yeah, I just want to make sure that I have, I don't live a life full of regrets and that I'm doing exactly what it is that I want to do, so. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, would love to have dinner with probably I think it's a tie between Oprah Winfrey and Ellen DeGeneres I just like what they stand for as um, as as women and I would just love to sit down with them and first of all thank them for everything that they've done for me I mean I've learned a lot through watching their talk shows and seeing the things the humanitarian things that they've done around the world and yeah just learn more through them so i think those would be two people i think there's a lot of fear surrounding coming to korea just because of what's going on in north korea and so um, to anyone who's interested in traveling abroad teaching in a foreign country um, i say do it like fear can be a really crippling thing and you really shouldn't let it hold you back from anything so um i mean the whatever's going on in North Korea hasn't affected me at all um, and so I really think that if this is something that you want to do just do it don't uh, don't let fear hold you back oh goodness <laughs> so dating in Korea this has been interesting um, for me I, I work at a private school and so I have pretty long hours and it doesn't really allow me to get out and meet people especially in the neighborhood that I that I do live and work in and so for me personally I think the best way that I've um, found to just see who's in the country see who's around is through dating apps and <laughs> um, although some of them are not ideal um, I have like made some pretty good friendships on um, on them so even if um, we don't end up dating I have formed some great relationships so um, but it, it tends to be difficult I mean because there, there are a lot of people who are on these dating apps for re reasons other than just dating and so you kind of have to weed through all those people to get through you know get to someone who who might be genuine so it, it does become difficult and I've had countless times where I've deleted the app and apps and been done with them and 
we downloaded them again so so as, when it comes to dating um i personally tend to stay away from korean men only because um, especially if i'm if i'm looking for them on a dating app um because first of all um i find that they them specifically are just on there to find foreign girls um and they're not really looking to, to have any real relationship other than a sexual one perhaps um and so um but i mean there there are, there are plenty of people who have dated korean men and have had great relationships um but there tends to be a divide or some differences between uh or sorry there tends to be some problems sometimes with when family comes into play um and so i know a lot of korean parents aren't too fond of you know men their children dating um foreigners so i know uh like that's been a, a problem for some and so for me personally i i tend to just stay away <laughs> so online you can find me on instagram at fifi underscore frank thank you so much for watching if you would like to share your story or have us visit your region send us a message on any of our social media platforms or via our website that's good